So this video is going to be just about uh, some SketchUp tips. Hopefully it'll be useful to uh, some of you that use SketchUp in modeling, particularly for 3D printing. Um, there's a couple things that, uh, particularly with plugins and just how you should model for printing that may be useful. To start, I just draw a little line to add to the image, group that. It's useful to have it as a group because then you can lock it rather than just having the image itself. And then I've resized it. Based on the research I did, uh, the blaster was roughly 17 inches long. So resized it so it was the right, uh, the reference image was the right size. And then I'm setting up um, the image on a layer so that I can toggle that layer on and off with scenes to make it easier for modeling and viewing the, you know, viewing the reference image itself and toggling it off when needed. So now that I've got that all set up, ready to start modeling. So one of the things to consider when you're going to model, particularly for 3D printing, is the segment count. Now in SketchUp, of course, you you always want to be, be wary of the segment count, even when you're not modeling for 3D printing. Um, but printing is one of the cases where you actually turn the segment count up, um, whereas often you're turning it down, because visually it doesn't make a lot of difference and you can save a polygon count by turning it down but once this gets printed out if it was a low segment count that would all show up so I turned this up to uh, about 80 segments I think it was before pulling this out and shaping that front barrel so I'll make that a component and as part of this again I was going to run a wooden dowel through the whole length of the gun so I'm creating that now and generally you want to leave about a, a, a 0 0.03 0 0.02 0 0.03 millimeter space to accommodate for the printing itself so I was creating that space now there's certain ridges on this front barrel so I just create a small component, doesn't have to be right from the start. And then testing a couple iterations to get the spacing right. Again, since I'm using 80, I should have known from the beginning to move it either four or five segments worth, and then that would create a nice even um, number. I, I, I was less worried about how many there were, just that it looked visually correct. So now I have all the segments, they look right. I copy them, paste them inside the component, and then copy the component off to the side and scale it up. SketchUp, if you've worked with it and if you've worked with small uh, details in SketchUp, it doesn't handle those very well. I mean, it's an architectural modeling software. It doesn't like really, really tiny details, but it, easy workaround is just to scale something up and then it works well. Now, to make a good 3D print, I'd have to delete all of this interior geometry and it would be a pain. I could do it manually, but it would be such a pain. There is a wonderful plugin that will do it for us and it's called the Solid Inspector by TomTom. Now it looks at this, it examines the geometry and says, hey, you've got all these faces inside here and that's gonna be a problem. So you hit fix and all of a sudden it does it for you. Now it doesn't work in every case. It's not always gonna fix your models properly, but there are a lot of cases where this will work and save you a lot of time. It's If you're 3D printing, you it's a must have plugin the solid inspector, it's going to tell you if you're ready to print uh, at all, and it will also fix some of the problems for you. So that's definitely something that you want to get. It's free, again, from TomTom. You can grab it on the extension warehouse. 
In fact, it's useful. You'll see, I'll just sort of run it often just to be checking geometry. It's just a good test of geometry. Now here, of course, I'm starting to create the, the sort of vent part of this barrel. And I'm going to use the intersect with model. Everything that I'm doing in here, um, I'm using SketchUp Pro, but I'm not using any of the Pro features. You could use uh, some of the solid tools to help create some of these intersections. That works well too, but in this case, I'm just using all basic features that are in the SketchUp Make version. So again, I've created a copy It's a, of the component. I'm exploding everything and intersecting with model. And then I find it helpful when you're cleaning geometry up to turn perspective off and just use your top and side views uh, which helps you make really quick selections to delete the geometry you don't need. So top view, delete that geometry, side view, delete that geometry. That looks right. Let's just run Solid Inspector and it reverses the faces for us. And here on the actual model, we have what we need. So then moving on to the handle, there, in, in any model, um, you, you know, you'll be doing some interpretation, deciding which details to leave in, which details to leave out. One of the things that is very um, good to remember, but hard to actually remember in the moment, is that these details get so small that they really don't matter that much. So here, you know, I'm creating a little bit of a, a softer edge for that trigger guard but using only four segments because it, it's just, it's not going to matter. Um, it's such a small detail. And over here too, again, I, I changed some of these arcs. I'm definitely not using 80 sides as I was before because um, it's just, it's too small to even notice. So to fix this, um, Solid Inspector is telling me I've got a couple internal faces I need to fix. So I go in and fix them manually. Again, working on the large version. And then here's another really useful plugin. This one is from Fredo6, and this one is not on the extension warehouse, but it is on Sketchucation's extension warehouse. And it's uh, his chamfer tool. So I can take this surface, and the normal follow me you would use in some of these cases, but in this case, it just, it doesn't work well. It doesn't resolve all the geometry, but Fredo's chamfer tool does a pretty good job of resolving that geometry. Just a little bit of cleanup and we have a nice beveled edge on that handle. So a few small adjustments and then, you know, I'll go in, add some more details. This is one of those areas where you might go in and, and this is sort of just your creative license to add in details as you see fit. I didn't try to make this model uh, screen accurate to the movie or accurate to the game. Um, I just made it close enough it, that it would be obvious. Now on this final, I wanted to show a couple ways that you might try uh, creating a little um, sort of indentation in a curved surface. So here's a, a normal way that you could do it. You could also just create those arcs, copy them, and then trace the edge, then offset one of those edges, draw in the lines and pull it over. So there's a couple ways you can just do it with the native SketchUp tools. Another tool by Fredo is um, his joint push-pull tool and tools on surface. Again, those are both um, from Fredo 6. And you can see here I'm drawing arcs actually uh, across a curved surface, which the native SketchUp tools don't do. And then I can connect those and use his joint push-pull to actually pull on a curved surface, again, which the native SketchUp push-pull doesn't do. And he's got several options here, so I'm sort of playing around with which one is going to work best. And finally, just to keep it straight, I'll copy that 
uh, circle forward it, but use the joint push pull to pull it down. Now to create the ridges, again, this was the model uh, that I had done previously, but to create those ridges, I'm going to just clean up my geometry a little bit. I'm not drawing along the axis, so I've got to redraw that. And I can just use the basic follow me tool to create that arc. And it is too big, so I'm going to make it smaller. Now, I should be doing this on the larger copy. Again, make this a component and do it on the larger copy. And in fact, SketchUp crashes here in just a second. <laughs> I love SketchUp, but, you know, save often. I didn't, I, I had just run with that model. I didn't save it. So here's the finished model just to show some of the examined parts. Again, just wanted to show a couple of the, the tips that, that I used uh, without showing the full build. But here's all of the parts and how they go together. It was all modeled so that it would fit around that wooden dowel, even that handle had the curve built into it. Everything built in separate parts that would fit on the 3D printer I have access to. Here's a couple of that base. And the scope was held on by these little brackets which were modeled separately. And those had little indentations modeled in. And again, those were all modeled with a little bit of an offset so that they'd fit together. You don't want to model something exactly that it fits together, give it about a 0.3 millimeter offset. But I hope that was helpful. If it's more useful that I slow down and go through more of the process, I could do that. Or if this isn't that interesting, go ahead and say so. Just seeing and hoping uh, that it may be interesting to some of you.